Welcome back to Sunday Night in America. Sometimes hate can blind you. You dislike someone so much, you refuse to concede they may have been right. I, I wonder if that's what happened when now President Biden undid everything his predecessor did when it comes to the border and immigration, and chaos has been our constant companion ever since. Not just chaos, drugs and violent crime and national security threats, and voters are making their displeasure known. Some surveys rank the border number one on the minds of voters. So how can the border be the number one issue in states far removed from the border? Because the border and immigration are no longer happy talk among the media about dreamers and a path to citizenship for valedictorians. The border is a metaphor for what seems to be broken in this country. Laws are ignored, and drugs are killing Americans, and the national security threat is real, and nursing students are being murdered. People know that real nations have real boundaries, and real countries know who's coming and why. And real nations protect women jogging, not Venezuelan gangs. Having a border doesn't make you a racist or a nativist any more than having a fenced-in backyard makes you a bad neighbor. Biden seriously misjudged the mood of the American people. And now he's trying to backtrack as fast as he can, and he's considering executive action because he knows the voters are blaming him for the disaster that is our southern border. But he's in a party that doesn't like fences, except their own, or cops, except their own private security detail. So what will Biden do, and more importantly, will the voters fall for it? Tom Homan is a former acting ICE director and a Fox News contributor, and he joins us now. Welcome to you, director. It wasn't that long ago that some in President Biden's party wanted to defund the police and defund ICE, and I'm just wondering, how well did that go over with the American people? Well, look, they, they never... Uh they never abolished ICE. So the talk was, you know, from the left, they're going to abolish ICE. And I said from day one, they will never abolish a federal agency, but they'll abolish the mission. They, they, they'll starve them for money. And that's exactly what's happened. ICE's mission is gone. I mean, 85% of the criminal aliens you arrested in the Trump administration, we can't arrest during this administration. And the money, as you can see from the stories lately, ICE is releasing thousands of people because they don't have money for beds. They, they, they can't fill a, a bed for $117 a night but we can give an NGO billions of dollars to put them in a bed at $500 a night. So they've, they've eventually shut uh, ICE operations down. And I think, I think the American people are beginning to realize what just happened in Georgia and what's happening in New York and uh, you know, all, the, all these criminal aliens out and about now committing serious crimes against police officers and citizens. Now people understand, where's ICE? Where's ICE? Well, ICE has been shut down. Their mission has been shut down, so ICE isn't looking for criminal aliens. And meanwhile, they are hearing President Biden claim what you're about to listen to. Let's listen to him together. I'll ask you a question on the other side. Our laws and our resources haven't kept up with our immigration system, and it's broken. And our politics has failed to fix it. So if this matters to you, it matters to your state, tell your members of Congress who are standing in the way, show a little spine. Pass the bipartisan security bill, notwithstanding you may reap the wrath of one or more of your colleagues. So I will translate that. It's not my fault. Blame Congress. I, I, that's a convenient talking point. I mean, Congress isn't popular, but I, President Trump did it without any help from Congress. So what's the truth? Whose fault is it? The fault is he should. President Biden should grow a spine. He came in office and wrote over 90 executive orders, abolishing everything we did to, to create the most secure border in my lifetime. He ended the Remain in Mexico program. He ended the third safe country agreements. He ended you know, no, the, the detention of all illegal aliens, no more catch and release. He did away with all of that. It, you know, so he, it, he, I agree with him, the immigration system is broken, but he broke it. We had the most secure border in my lifetime because of the actions by President Trump, without the help of Congress. President Biden could fix the border tomorrow. He could put the Remain in Mexico program back in place. The highest courts in the land said it's legal. He can put the third, third safe country agreements back in. He can end catch and release. Matter of fact, he should end the catch and release because statute, federal statute says, as you know, when, it, when illegal alien enters the United States without proper documentation, the statute says they shall be detained. 
That's what the law recalls for. But he's ignoring the law. So he can fix this with a stroke of a pen tomorrow. But he spent three years doing everything he can to, to create this open borders. He hasn't did a damn thing to slow the flow. Now he wants to blame Congress and Republicans. It's disgusting. Yeah, blaming Congress is always convenient. In this case, it just doesn't happen to be accurate. Tom Homan, former ICE director, and who knows if there's another Republican administration on the horizon, you may be in that one too. Thank you for joining us on a Sunday night, and thank you for your service to our country. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.